not going to stand on there because my back is all messed up. But, um, yeah, so I'm Ethan, uh, Ethan McCord. I, I served in Iraq in 2007 to 2008 is when I was supposed to die, but I was uh, injured uh, while in Iraq by an IED. Um, how many people here have seen the video Collateral Murder that was released by WikiLeaks? Right, I'm the soldier in the video carrying the wounded children from the van. Um, I refuse to uh, partake in the murder of innocent civilians. Um, it's not why I joined the military. And uh, in fact, that's all we were murdering over there was innocent men, women, and children. Um, they say we're after the insurgents, but I never one time saw an insurgent while I was in Iraq. I saw people protecting their homes and families. Uh, in the military, they told us that the the Muslim communities hate us because of our freedoms, which isn't true. They hate us because we've been murdering them, murdering their families. I tell people all the time, how would you feel if I kicked in your front door, killed your mom, your dad, your little brother or sister or son and daughter, uh, and told you that it was going to be uh, beneficial to your government and your, your way of life? You would pick up a weapon and you would fight me. And that's what we're calling insurgents nowadays, is anybody who's going to fight back because... Uh, we as Americans and, and can occupy a country and say that we're doing it for, for the betterment of them. Um, so it's not only are, is this war in Iraq uh, immoral, but it's illegal. Um, all we're doing is, is murdering people. Uh, I've watched it firsthand. Um, you know, throughout the time that I was there, I, I, I then ordered my soldiers not to fire their weapons. Uh, we were given orders by my battalion commander for 360 degree rotational fire, which was to kill every motherfucker in the street. Uh, men, women, and children. I watched this carried out uh, by my platoon on many uh, occasions. I then also uh, uh, watched as we dragged men out of their homes in the middle of the night while we were wearing masks. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the biker mask with skeletons. Uh, that's what we wore to drag people out of their homes. We would beat them severely, um, and then we would uh, throw them back on the street because we can't turn them over to the MPs without being uh, uh, questioned and, and stuff like that. So we, we carried drop weapons when when uh, people in my platoon would, would shoot somebody on the street. We'd just throw a weapon next to them, take a picture, and say, hey, this is, uh, they had a weapon. Um, Again, I, th I think that people uh, need to understand exactly what's happening in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, again, with the drones, we're going into Pakistan, we're killing people. If a drone can't pick out soldiers on the ground, our own soldiers, how are they going to determine whether or not they're a civilian or a militant? I mean, we're, we're killing our own people with drones now. So, uh, the only way for us to uh, stop this is for everybody to stand up and say this is bullshit. You're not going to spend my money anymore on illegal and moral wars, and you're not doing this in my name. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of overshadowed by Ethan, because usually I can talk about my time in Iraq. Uh, I can talk about the reality that, that our orders were to push cars off the road if they stopped in front of our convoys. Um, the reality that the people that we were fighting were defending their homes. Um, you know, this is this is the uh, I mean as, as you guys know when we went around this circle uh, you know at least four or five of us are, are vets we've, we've been there we've seen why it doesn't work anybody living under that kind of occupation is going to fight back until then the counterinsurgency manual holds and it does it repeatedly that the more troops you throw into the situation the more people are going to get going to get upset the more they're going to going to resist the more violence there's going to be the more American casualties we're going to have and the more, uh, the more civilian casualties we're going to have. And indeed, as we've seen with the two Obama surges, um, we've seen civilian casualties have gone up, we've seen U.S. and coalition casualties have gone up, uh, and we have seen um, uh, that the public opinion polls of the Taliban have also shown that they're gaining popularity. Uh, so our, the, this, this strategy is counterproductive, and we knew it was counterproductive when we did it. Uh, it was a bad idea to send more troops into Afghanistan. Uh, it was a situation that, that uh, not that it was controlled, but it was, uh, it was better before we did two surges. Um, and now we've really upset a lot of people. Uh, the, 
They say when your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, so we spent $734 million last year on our military. So we think that the only solution to the anti-American sentiment that exists among a lot of different people, um, but in particular people who have been willing to commit, to commit acts of violence against us, is to invade countries of people who look like that or think like that, uh, kill their families, push their cars off the road, and that somehow that's going to endear them to us and they're going to not want to hurt us anymore. Um, and again, we've <laughs> we know that's simply not true. Um, that that uh, you know what 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 Ethan says. I mean, we were both infantrymen in in Iraq. Um, what you see in the collateral murder video, where uh, where it's just shoot first, ask questions later. That's the reality. Um, you're trained to do that. That is that 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 is the teaching. <laughs> you're you're taught to that people are trying to kill you, and if you feel in danger, you kill everybody else so that you live. Um, and I'm not proud of the things I did in, in Iraq. Um, and I understand why those people were resisting, why they were fighting against us. So for me, um, being a peace activist is a necessity. Having done that, having been a part of that, um, I have to stand up and say something. I have to come back and I have to, I, I have to say, wait a minute, what we're doing is t it's crippling our economy. We've, t we've put two major wars and several minor wars on, on our credit card. Um, rather than, than raising taxes to pay for the wars. Um, it's destroyed our economy. It's killed, it's killed you know, 5,000 of my brothers and sisters in uniform. It's killed hundreds of thousands of innocents in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, low figure. Low figure, <laughs> low figure. I mean, if you, if you count uh, the, the, uh, the people who were starved and, and killed from lack of medical care and dehydration due to our sanctions, it's well over a million. Um, how can I stand here knowing that, having seen that, having lived that, and not do something about it? Um, I encourage all of you to, to go out and talk to people um, to do this work. And it's not political. Um, you know, as we know, that we've got libertarians here, we've got republicans here, we've got, uh, we've got you know, liberals and, and progressives and socialists here. And it's not about your, your economic beliefs. It's about a simple belief that, uh, that this is wrong, that killing people uh, First, without a strategy, without without a, a need to defend yourself, is wrong. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe that the military. I don't believe that what you guys are doing is dishonorable. But I believe that war is only justified when it's in defense of the people of this nation or the Constitution. And I don't think that what I did in Iraq and what we're doing in Iraq and Afghanistan is in defense of the people of this country or the Constitution. Um, and so, when you guys get your get your uh, your butter bars. And you, and you go, I want you to remember that. I want you to think about what you're doing and how you're leading your troops. Make sure you're doing it in a moral way. Um, we need good lieutenants uh, who will then become good captains and on and on. Um, and we need you to be moral people. Uh, and we need you to speak up when, when what we're doing doesn't make sense and it's not in the best interest of this country. Um, you're going to swear an oath, or if you, I don't know if you've already sworn an oath to the Constitution. Both of these wars violate our Constitution. Um, and if you've read the Constitution, that, that's something you should figure out. Look at Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution. Look at, look at uh, what it says about going to war and acts of aggression. Uh, look at Articles 39 through 42 of the U.N. Charter in regard to Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution. And you'll find that by fighting these wars, you are not defending the Constitution, you're violating the Constitution. Um, that's been held by a number of members of Congress. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a legal argument that, that holds a lot of water. So look into that. Um, Yes, thanks for listening. We yeah. talk about though what uh, what things are going to look like in the future. The old anti-war movement is dead, and Barack Obama killed him. Like Barack Obama's killed many people, and that seems to be his main talent apparently. He killed the anti-war movement effectively. So, and besides, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. The anti-war movement, as we know it, has been terribly ineffective and kind of embarrassing over the past ten years. A peace movement that's effective, one that's going to work is going to be one that's not ideological, one that's pro-America, patriotic, and working towards something. That's why we call it the New Peace Movement. We're working toward peace, because there's a goal here, and that's the end of empire, and the end of, the end, the end of war, the end of occupation. What we're doing abroad is destroying our country. It's making us a disgrace and an embarrassment. It's empowering a monster like Barack Obama. Let's say what he is, he's now doubled the rate of military deaths in Afghanistan, of military soldiers, than there was under Bush. 
and as recently as about a year and a half ago, two years ago, he'd already killed many, many more people than Bush did. This isn't a pro-Bush thing. Bush is a monster, too. But there's clearly an agenda here, and it has nothing to do with America. It has nothing to do with hope or change. It has to do with where does one begin to, un, you know, where, where does one begin to unpack why we have militarism? There's many different motives and many different reasons. But it shouldn't be ideological. It should be common sense that, A, you shouldn't be stolen from. B, that money you're... <laughs> sending robots to kill people or telling people that's a, that's a completely legitimate career choice. It's not. It's certainly not with my money. So, yes, I mean, we do need to, you know, it, it, and I don't always mean to be so inflammatory, but the fact is, if we should not praise and reward people for killing others. And it should be understood. I don't know why that's, there's nothing really controversial about that. I just want to basically agree with Angela's point about this battle is really going to be won by changing the, the dialogue in America. And uh, if any of you were around here earlier when Ethan was speaking uh, and somebody asked him about uh, well, can you say that there was truly nothing good that came of the war? Well, I was a medic over there, and I can say that there was a lot of good, and that there were people's lives saved, but if somebody came into your house and, you know, shot your dog and killed your father and fixed your leaky faucet, would that make it all right? I mean, it's not. You had to weigh the, the pros and the cons. At the end of the day, you can't point to the, to the few benefits that have come from our involvement over there and say, well, look, this stuff would have never happened if we were over there. Well, so neither would have all the people who have died. Um, you really can't rationalize things like that. Uh, you have to take the tact, I think, that it's just never right to initiate violence against people um, unless they themselves are, are initiating violence against you. That's all I have to say.